All right, hi. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to select the scenario for PPE use um, and how to customize your own scenarios. In this video, I've assumed that you've already input your data on this tab. If you haven't done that yet and you need some help with that, you can see the previous video in which we discussed how to do that. All right, so we've already put input our data. It's all in here. These are our projections for the number of COVID-19 patients hospitalized, etc., over this range of dates that you've input here. And now we want to see how that plays out in terms of the anticipated amount of PPE used to treat those, those particular patients. Okay, so this tool become, comes pre-populated with a few um, scenarios. The first one is called standard, which is meant to um, cover the sort of use, PPE use you would see for treating respiratory patients under typical use. So not in some sort of crisis scenario or in some sort of shortage type of scenario. Um, in, in this scenario, you can see all of the assumptions that are built into how we come up with the calculations that are shown over here, which are the total number that will be needed over the time period that you've input. Um, and we, let's, I think it makes sense to first begin by talking a little bit about how some of these things are calculated. So we have staffing-based calculations, which um, assume certain patient-to-staff ratios, which you see right here, shift lengths, which you see right here, and the number of shifts of use. So um, for example, if you're doing a staffing-based calculation for something like an N95 and the value here is one, that means that each person on staff will use their N95 mask for one full shift. If this value here were two, it would mean that each person on staff would use their N95 mask for two full shifts. We also do some contact-based calculations instead. So that's the second type of calculation. Um, in this case, for the contact-based calculations, um, we need to know how many number of con the number of contacts per patient day in each of the units and by each of the types of staff um, and clinicians considered here. Um, and we also need to know the number of contacts of use. So this, this is a little bit tricky. This is how many contacts are typically made before one of these items is discarded. So in this case here, we have our default setting for standard for N95 is 19 contacts. That's not because the N95 is used on 19 consecutive contacts before it's thrown away. It's because they're not typically used. And so we found in our data that on average it took about 19 contacts before one of those was used. For things like gloves, which are used on every contact and discarded after each contact, this value is one because it only takes one contact before one of these is discarded. Um, similarly for gowns, for example, if if you're operating in a situation in which a gown is used for every contact and discarded after each contact. If you were in a situation, for example, where, and this is maybe a little bit unrealistic, but where um, you wanted gowns to be used for two consecutive contacts and they're used on every contact, you would just change this value to two in the custom tab. So we've talked about two different ways in which we can make these um, calculations to come up with the total amount of usage. Um, you only need to use one or the other for each type of equipment. So in this section here, this calculation basis section, we're just saying for N95s in the ICU, for example, right here, are we going to use the contact-based type of calculations or the staffing-based calculations? So again, just to review, if we're using a staffing-based calculation, we are specifying our policy for the use of N95 masks in terms of the number of um, shifts of use. If we're using a contact-based calculation, we are specifying that policy in terms of the number of contacts of use. And these can differ um, between the different um, types of equipment and across the different units. In our standard scenario, it's essentially mostly contact-based, in fact, all contact-based, except for the PAPRs. All right. So you can move out of the standard scenario to a contingency scenario um, by, excuse me, clicking here and just simply clicking this. And this will update all of the values here, as well as all of the assumptions down here that you can see going into it. So again, you can see in this scenario, um, we are saying that, um, for example, the, the patient to staff ratios have increased a little bit, and um, the number of shifts of use may have also increased, or the number of contacts before discarding an item may have also increased. You can also see down here on this calculation basis section that in the contingency scenario, we are now calculating um, N95 use based on the staffing-based calculation instead of a contact base. So we've moved away from saying, throw away your N95 after every time you use it um, towards keep it for your whole shift. 
All right. You can also have something similar here in the crisis scenario where, again, the values have changed and you can see how they've changed down here. All right. Now, if you want to customize any of these scenarios to be more consistent with how your particular hospital or hospital system operates, you can do that in the custom scenario. So again, just go to this little pull down menu here and you'd select custom and you can change any of the assumptions that go into the model. So for example, if in the ICU, it is typically more like 1.5 patients per registered nurse, you could simply input 1.5 here, press enter, and then all of these numbers should update automatically. If for example, all of the, um, all of the clinicians have 12 hour shifts instead of eight hour shifts. You can simply update that. Oops, excuse me. Here. You can also try out different policies in terms of um, um, PPE conservation by, by changing the assumptions that go into the model. So for the contact based calculations, instead of saying throw one away after every um, every contact, you could change this maybe to 20, for example. Um, you could change the number of contacts per patient day. So maybe you're assuming that you're really slammed in some, in some situation and you're going to be contacting patients less often than typical. So maybe this would be something like 12. I don't know. I'm sort of making up these numbers here just to show you how you could do this. And you can also here change how um, you determine which sorts of calculations you want to use. So in this case, perhaps, surgical masks, you have a shortage, and instead of doing a contact-based calculation, you would rather do a staffing-based calculation. Again, saying, don't throw away your surgical mask after this number of contacts. Instead, keep it for your whole shift. We're going to say how many shifts you're going to keep it for. Um, and that is essentially it. The top line numbers end up showing up up here, and they're automatically adjusted as you change the assumptions um, that you put in down here. And you can also see more high level or more high resolution um, versions of these. So you can see some figures that show um, what the consumption, the cumulative consumption will look like across, across the time period that you've input, as well as predictions by day and cumulative predictions over here, um, et cetera. All right, so I think that's it. Um, hopefully you'll find this useful, thanks.